Something that very few people know is that the modern term Kubernetes engineer, it derives from an ancient Greek idiom, and it translates roughly in modern English to YAML craftsperson. <laughs> So, jokes aside, let's discuss this from a developer experience perspective. The fundamental API of Kubernetes to the finer infrastructure, it's declarative YAML. That means you're soon going to end up with tons and tons of YAML, and that is pretty hard to manage. But on the bright side, if your services are similar in some respect, we can abstract away those common patterns. Now, in 2020, the main tools to help you manage your YAML and abstract away those common patterns for future reuse are Helm and Customize. So let's talk about how that's going to work. Let's start with a simple use case and then expand. You want anyone on your team to be able to add a new service to your application. That might be a new REST API or a new data source for GraphQL, whatever you need. You want to set conventions for how engineers define those services. So that's where templating comes in. Templating lets you easily define common patterns and standards for your team but you don't end up with that situation where everyone needs to be closely familiar with all the YAML. So the main concept here is that one person sets up the template and then everyone else can reuse it by just changing some key values. Due to the magic of templating, everything works out. So let's take a look at those tools, starting with Helm. So this is what a very simple Helm chart looks like. There are three things to note here. One is the chart file that declares the chart. Then we have a values file that specifies uh, parameters to the chart. And lastly, there's templates, and that is the actual contents of the chart. Uh, we're gonna look at all of these, and let's start with templates. This looks like a Kubernetes deployment, but if you tried to keep control apply it, it would fail. And that's because of this massive curly braces in the way. Now, if you're a Go developer, you know what these are. These are just Go templates. And Go templates provide us with the same abstractions as most templating languages. So loops, variables, helper functions, and so on. In this case, these are templating variables. So when Helm generates YAML for us, it's just going to replace the braces with the contents of the variables. And this way, we can ensure consistent patterns to our definitions. For example, this template ensures that every deployment is going to have an app label. Now, here you can see that we're evaluating values.name everywhere. So where does that come from? Let's take a look at our values file. A chart's values file defines parameters that a user can pass to the template and sets reasonable defaults. Later, we can call Helm with a set flag and then we can pass parameters to it. And so let's do it here. Let's create a deployment and let's call it dex.dev. As you can see, now all those curly braces that we had before have been replaced and they now take the form of the value we specified. There is much more that Helm can do for your deployments. Uh, it can do linting, plugins, history, rollbacks, etc. But let's take pause now and talk about the other YAML management tool, and that is Customize. Customize works very differently. With Helm, you have charts, and you can pass parameters to those charts, and they customize the output of Helm. You can do that with the command line or with your values file. Now, with Customize, you start with working YAML. So in this example, uh, we have a base YAML directory, and it contains a working deployment. This is not a template. As you can see, there are no curly braces. And then on top of that, Customize is going to give you the tools and idioms to layer changes on top of your base YAML. And that's how you're going to generate the YAML files for your services. So let's take this service called Glitch. We're going to generate YAML for it by taking that base YAML file and layering changes on top of it. We do that with the customization file. Going line by line, here you can see that we are replacing the image, prefixing the name of the resource, applying a label, and applying an arbitrary patch. You can see the result of this by running Customize Build. So here's the base file, and here's the new generated YAML file. In this example, every time a developer needs to add a new service, they create a new customization config that layers those services overrides on top of the base file. We've talked about the ways you can use Helm and Customize to define new services and set conventions for services internally. Which brings me to an important topic. 
Customize is a simpler tool. It has less bells and whistles. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you need. So let's talk about the extras that Helm has to know whether there's something you need or whether those extras are something that would slow you down. Developers on your team have probably heard about Helm and they probably heard about Helm because of Helm repos. So the number one way people find out about Helm is they find some Helm chart that they want to use and let's say it identifies iguanas in pictures or something and developers then want to add that to their development environments. Uh, more common cases would be to add a Postgres database chart or an Airflow chart or a Grafana chart. The reason Helm charts are so popular is because Helm lets you pass arguments to a template. Now, those are understandable arguments, and that's an easy to share template. What does this mean? It means if you just found some open source service and it's big and complicated, and you don't want to have to dig through all that YAML to understand how it works, those arguments give you an easier way to get a handle on how to use that service. So if your team wants to leverage open source services, you will very likely end up using Helm at some point. What that also means is because Helm lets you very easily share those templates, it provides you a very easy way to publish structured, approachable APIs so that anyone can use your services in a dev environment. Using a remote Helm chart and a local Helm chart feels pretty similar. So from the perspective of developers, this opens up a lot of possibilities. So which should you use, Helm or Customize? That's going to depend on two questions. One is who's going to be using those configs, and the other is how much is that user supposed to know? So if you're going to write all those configs by yourself, you probably want to use Customize because it's simpler. Customize is somewhat like regular expressions where you can do a whole lot with just a little. The downside is to really use it well, you're going to need in-depth knowledge of how that YAML works. You're going to need to know how all those layers and patches work together. Now, if you're thinking of something different, if you want users to not have to worry about the YAML, not have to know about anything under the hood, you just want them to be able to very easily and safely add and start using your new Iguana server or whatever it is, uh, then you probably want to put in the extra effort and create a Helm chart for that. I hope this video was useful for you and I hope it gave you a good introduction on how YAML templating works and about the main tools used for it. For more videos like this, please subscribe and see you next time at dex.dev. Bye!